Hi everyone! So for the last couple months I have been teaching myself how to make my own incense cones. So I thought this would be a nice subject to share with you to show you that you can do it quite easily at home. Really the most difficult thing is finding a nice ratio of herbs to the binding agents and some additional scents if you want to um, and getting that to a place that you really enjoy and that the cones burn nicely. So I'm going to walk you through my recipe I've come up with but there are plenty of other recipes online. I'll even link to some other sort of alternative ingredients that you can use in the text attached to this video. So we'll go ahead and I'll just show you the ingredients that I'm going to use and then you can try it at home. So first and foremost, there's basically three different elements what you need in your cones. So you need some powdered material, some powdered herbs. Um, that can either be herbs that you powder yourself. So some of the ingredients in my recipe, I'm actually powdering myself with a mortar and pestle. I'll show you that. Um, and then some of them I've actually bought pre-powdered. That's available at many of the bulk herb retailers. Um, and then you're going to need some kind of a binding agent so that can be, you know, a natural kind of sticky substance that kind of binds the cone together. And then if you want to add additional scents like essential oils, you can do that. So my uh, recipe has all of those elements, but again, you can decide. You can pare it down or add more. That's up to you. So I'm going to tilt this down so that you can see the ingredients that I'm using. So my first herbs that I really wanted to work with were sage and rosemary. So these are both herbs that I have in my garden. So you can see um, I have some, some uh, sage here that I've kind of powdered up. Each time that I make the recipe, I kind of powder it a little bit further. Um, and then I also have some rosemary. It's a little bit harder to powder that up. Again, you could purchase this um, online already pre-powdered. But what I have usually done is use my mortar and pestle. Um, and just kind of grind up the um, herbs so that they're a really nice fine powder. So I've already worked on that before I started the video. So my first herb I'm working with here is sage and I'm actually going to use one and a quarter teaspoons of sage. I've already measured that out. So we'll put that in our main bowl here. And then next we're going to do half a teaspoon of rosemary. Um, now I've already powdered this kind of as much as possible. It's still a little bit chunky, but I think it'll work. We're going to do a half a teaspoon of that. And then one of the herbs that I bought pre-powdered is some Rama Tulsi. This is one of my favorite herbs for tea, but I've, I've gotten it in the powdered version. So we're going to do three and a half teaspoons of that. So I have a uh, one teaspoon here. So you can tell the a little bit of a different consistency with those three herbs, but they'll all work together nicely. So we're doing three and a half. That's three and a half. And then next we're going to introduce one of the binding agents. So I wanted to really keep this a really natural recipe. Um, so I am starting with some marshmallow root. Again, I have pre pre-bought this, um, pre-powdered, uh, but you could purchase the marshmallow root and powder it yourself if you wanted to. So we're doing two teaspoons of this. So again, this is kind of acting like a bit of a glue. Once it's um, in contact with water, it becomes a little bit sticky. And then my second kind of binder and also an additional kind of scent is I'm actually using powdered pine resin. So the resin, resinous um, nature of this gives it a little bit more of a binding power. I also really love the smell of pine. Um, and I got this uh, actually on Etsy and it's a, um, a, a company based in the United States. It's all um, ground here in the US, which is amazing. So this will be one and a quarter teaspoons of pine resin. And you can get resins in different forms too. They come in, in almost like kind of like a, a little rock too. So this is a pretty easy way to work with this. And then last but not least, I'm going to add in some essential oils. You certainly do not have to do that. I, I will also probably make some cones without essential oils, but I thought that these two scents kind of gave this a nice freshness. So I'm going to add in some cedarwood essential oil. Just three drops. It's very concentrated, so you really don't need much. Do those throughout the powder. And then I'm going to do six drops of a wild orange essential oil. So this just gives it a little bit of a brightness. 
And then the last bit is just to add in water. So that's kind of the moment when you have to decide, you know, how wet do you want your substance? Um, and so I've actually already pre-mixed a mix here, so you didn't have to wait for that. And I added five teaspoons of water into my mix. You want to add it quite slowly. You don't want it to be too wet. But you'll notice when it kind of gets to this consistency where it kind of keeping its shape a little bit. And you're hoping that it'll have enough of those binding agents that it'll be a little bit sticky. Um, but again, you'll figure that out on your own. Now, I like to just hand shape these, but you could also go and buy um, those tips, uh, those bakery frosting tips. They're kind of like a plastic triangle. That works too. But I'll just show you that um, I usually do about a quarter of a teaspoon of material. So about like that. Um, to make the cones. And I actually just really like to just form them with my hands. I think it's the easiest way to do it. Um, I think that it actually is a little bit more, uh, I can make them a little bit more consistent that way. Um, the other ones just took a little bit more time for me. I just didn't enjoy it as much. So um, there you go. You've got a little incense cone there. Now you could, if you wanted to, decide to poke a hole uh, up the center of the bottom to make what's called a backflow incense cone. So that's for backflow incense burners where the cone is kind of sitting on top, the smoke will start to um, actually billow out the bottom and go down through your incense burner. That's just if you have a backflow um, burner. And those can burn normally on kind of a flat stand as well, but that's kind of the point of them, to use those backflow burners. Um, I'm actually just going to leave these as is, but again, you can decide however you'd like to do that. Um, I am going to then let these dry for probably at least a week. They might appear dry on the outside, but once you start to burn them, you'll realize that they probably haven't fully dried on the inside. Uh, a lot of times they'll start to burn and about halfway down they'll kind of smolder out. So um, you again will figure that out in your own, uh, you know, you have certain amount of humidity in the air at your house. Um, you can experiment with the best place to dry them. I like to just put them on a plate. I might even put some um, like baking paper underneath them. Um, I'll turn them over every couple days to make sure that they're, you know, being exposed to air on all sides. Um, you could also potentially put them in a very, very, very low heat um, dehydrator if you wanted to. I hesitate with that a little bit because they have essential oils in them, or at least my recipe does. Um, you don't want to burn out any of those oils. Um, but again, you'll figure it out on your own, but those are the three basic elements that you need. Um, powdered herbs, some kind of a binding agent, and then an additional scent if you'd like to. So good luck trying at home. Again, there's extra resources in the text version of this, and I hope you have fun.